Hi, my name is Mike. I make music as domestic scene, and today I'm really stoked to be building the tripod by Robo. Uh, it says 3PT on the faceplate, but I'm pretty sure it's called tripod. Um, so that's what I'm calling it. Uh, and yeah, this is the this is the module that really got me excited to start building my own Eurorack system. Um, I saw I just saw some initial stuff about it, and it just looks so cool, and it does so many useful things. It's a performance control, just like a single knob performance control that can. Uh, control three different parameters at once. Uh, it can also act as three independent LFOs. Uh, you can set it up to be um, a Euclidean trigger se sequencer, uh, a eight-step sequencer, a chord generator, um, a quantizer, and maybe something else. Um, those are the things I, I think, yeah, just like a, a random generator, random signal generator. So uh, a bunch of utilities uh, just packed into one module. And I think depending on what you feed into it, be that clock or uh, volt per octave CV or something like that, it can, it can perform different functions. Um, and it just looks cool. And everything about this kit just feels like quality. Um, the instructions are printed on a really nice uh, paper, full color. Uh, in a nice little booklet, um, the PCB boards, uh, the way that they're printed is uh, it's just so... Here, let's see if I can get this to focus. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Come on, baby. Yeah, so check that out. Like, the PCB board is just labeled so well that I think it's going to be hard for me to remember to check the instructions because I can... I'm like 90% sure I can just build this by looking at it um, at this point. Um, yeah, so I'm hoping that I can just hit fast forward on this and get through this whole thing without too much problems. Um, but of course, if I'm running into anything odd, I'll, I'll take a minute to talk about it. Um, but yeah, this is, this is exciting and I'm, I'm happy to get going on it. So let's do it. Okay, so in according to the instructions, you need to start with the LEDs um, and basically build this whole uh, build this whole board first, and then uh, attach the faceplate. So there's a few pieces you don't solder, and then put this all together, and then when it's all held in place, then you solder it up. I'm a little reluctant to start with this board because uh, putting the faceplate on is, I think, the the thing that will motivate me. Uh, to finish. Uh, it's like the, the fun part, so like that's what kind of like I'm looking forward to, but uh, I think I'm going to get there pretty quickly with the faceplate and then have to go to this board, which holds uh, most of the resistors and the, um, uh, the AT Mega chip and uh, some of the other IC components and stuff like that. Um, but I'm going to go by the book and, and do it in the order that they suggest. Uh, so let's get started with that. Just start adding in the uh, LEDs. Um, pretty sure these have to go flush. Uh, so long leg on the positive side and go all the way in and just get soldered up. So you don't have to wait for these ones. It's not like they have to pop up through this faceplate because the faceplate just has a semi-transparent area um, where these lights will show through. So I'll just get these in there and yeah, solder them up. So yeah, um, I chose just to do this one row at a time. There's three consecutive uh, rings of LEDs. And so I just did the outer one first, and that's because I kind of could tell right away that this was just going to become like a mess of uh, component legs. And 
even with just that single uh, row that I did, um, it kind of got at a couple points a little difficult to get in there with the solder because there's lots of legs poking up and kind of like hitting you in the knuckles and stuff. So it's a little hard to get around. So um, yeah, my advice for what it's worth is just to do uh, one ring at a time just to kind of keep it controlled because it's pretty tight in that area. Right, so the LEDs are all in now, and uh, it's time to move on to these dials. Yeah, so now we're on to uh, the parts that uh, need to align with the front panel. So these parts you, s you put in, but you don't solder yet. Um, so I'm going to start getting these in and uh, starting with these trimmer knobs. I think we just pop these all in and it's good to go. Okay, so the trimmers are in. Now we've got to put the potentiometer in. So the way I understand it, this is going to be that one knob to control everything once this thing is completely built. And now it's just a couple of uh, Thonkacons. Now, this piece um, seems like a 3D printed custom little piece here, and what it does is it goes in between the uh, rows of LEDs and uh, I presume kind of like blocks out the light from one row bleeding through to the next. Because um, what makes this module look so damn sexy is like the <laughs> Knight Rider-esque uh, three little lines just going through there so um, try to get this guy in there and then I think we put the panel on right it's a pretty straightforward piece but if not all of your if if your LEDs aren't all perfectly up and down um, it is a little tricky to fit in but I think we've pretty much got it so a couple of mine were off alignment slightly I don't think that's going to matter much in the end, but for now, it made it a little harder to put that ring in there. Okay. So we'll try this panel and see if that ring's seated properly. So one tricky part about putting this together is uh, this little um, this little button in the upper corner. And it's got these kind of uh, bent out legs, and those legs, when they sit in there, kind of hold it up off the PCB board and kind of pop that button up through the surface of the board. Um, but they don't stay in as easily as the rest of the stuff. So. This actually fell loose from the board while I was soldering everything else. Um, and I, I actually did start soldering that hole thinking that it was still attached. So I think if I heat that hotter solder up, I can push this part back in there and that should hold. But just be aware of that. This part's pretty tricky compared to everything else.
So now, just give it a knob. And that's the first board done. I think uh, this is a good time for me to take a break. So, see you soon. So, I'm back at it. Um, I realized after I shut off the camera before that uh, there's one more thing that needs to go onto this, uh, this first board, um, which is the header pins. So I took a look at these and it's a bigger problem than I thought. <laughs> I thought, oh, I just forgot to put those on. And then I looked um, and the spot um, here that the header pin goes into is a seven hole um, component. And these header pins that came with the kit have eight pins. So what I'm thinking that I need to do is either just try to, um, can I get this to focus again? Yeah. Uh, I either just need to try to snip a pin off of there or maybe I can try to pull it out. I'm not, I'm going to try pulling it before I snip it. Um, but yeah, so those pins shouldn't be contacting. I don't think there's anything going, you know, between pin to pin that I would mess up by um, trying to pull it out or anything. I think it's just a plastic enclosure. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, you can see that's the pin and I just pulled it right out. It didn't take much effort to pull that out. Um, so yeah, if you, if you build this and you end up with, uh, eight pin sockets, that's, that's the way to do it. Just grab it, pull it straight out of the socket and it comes out really easily. So I'll do that to the other two, uh, take the face plate off again and then solder these on. Okay. So <clears throat> having a little bit of trouble figuring out how to uh, keep the header socket on the board flush and, and straight to solder it up. So I think I just, uh, I think the best approach is just to solder one pin um, and to hold it and then while not holding a solder wire then I can heat it up again and just get it into a good alignment, let it um, let it cool and then that should hold it in place so that I can solder the rest of the pins. Yeah, so there with all these resistors, I um, decided to just put them all in and then I soldered them from the top of the board. Um, and then when I was done, I just snipped the legs, flipped it over and then inspected uh, the joints to make sure that everything looked like it had gotten a solid amount of solder. Uh, and there was like one or two that I thought could use a touch more. So I just quickly touched those up but it was a pretty quick, efficient way to put these uh, resistors on. And uh, now we can go on to the rest of the components and I'll pause if there's anything worth talking about. Otherwise, I'll just keep uh, trying to get this board together.
So I'm charging the battery on my other camera, but I didn't want to stop working, so I just kept going. Um, I just got to a part where, uh, similar to in the last video where I was trying to deal with uh, having to snip off some parts of the header pins, um, this one calls for a four pin header and the part here is five pins and it's it's similar although this is only a single row but um, uh, after having made that video again and talking to some people online um, I was told that you can also just try to use snippers so I'm going to try that here with this four pin uh, right angle um, are we in focus? I hope so um, yeah, so this, we've got this right angle header, and I'm going to try just like doing a snip here. Yeah, no problem. So, uh, you can try uh, snapping them with leverage like I did last time, or just try using snips. Um, seems to make a lot of sense. Right, so I just put these uh, these header pins into the first board so that I can actually keep them aligned when I solder up this board. So these get soldered onto the second board, but if I have them, yeah, if I have them already inserted into the sockets on the first board, I'm sure that when this is all put together, everything's going to fit. Right, so it looks like the only thing left to do is put in uh, the, the ICs. Um, and then plug it all up boards together, plug it in, test it, and we should be done. Alright, so I got all the ICs in. Uh, just need to put the two boards together. Easy peasy. And plug in the power cable. Ah, so on the PCB board, it actually does have it marked where the red stripe's supposed to go. Um, but the nice thing about this module is that the socket is keyed, so you can't you can't put this in the wrong way anyway. Um, so I feel pretty confident about that cable. Um, yeah, everything's good. So I'm just gonna test this, make sure that there's uh, no shorts. Uh, as far as I can test for and um, yeah plug it in and see what see what happens okay so this uh, this set of six pins in the middle that's all ground so you have I believe the negative voltage where the red stripe is I think and then the positive voltage on the other end. So uh, in this middle section where it's all ground, this should have continuity. Um, but these ones on the ends shouldn't have continuity with anything else. So that's how I'm that's how I'm looking for something flowing weird. And this seems like it's fine. So plug it in. Okay, so here we go. I have uh, the tripod uh, hooked up to power. Don't have the power on yet. Um, and it's the only thing plugged in there. So if there's a problem, it's isolated. And I'll turn the power on and see what happens. That looked correct, <laughs> I think. Um, yeah, so, so far, so good, there's the three LFOs.
Awesome. Mm -mm -mm. I need a need to remember. Oh, this is the triad. So these are chords. I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, I definitely need to take a look at the uh, instruction manual to figure out what all the different modes are, but it looks like it's working properly. Um, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try hooking it up to um, a mini brute and see if I can get some interplay between the module and the synth. And yeah, I have to say I'm pretty pleased with how this build went. So. As you can see, it's a really, really sexy looking module, uh, and the build was other than other than the confusion about the pins on those headers, uh, where it was uh, needed seven pin headers and there was eight pin parts. Um, everything else was really smooth, and really uh, a pleasure to work on. So I'm stoked to try this thing out.